Hi, so we're just waiting for some lights. Um, before I begin, I'd like to ask some questions and understand who's in the audience. So firstly, who here has never used Bitcoin? And who understands the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain? And who here could name 10 uses for blockchain except for payments? Okay, cool. So I need a clicker. So today we, we have a very interesting topic and a lot to get through. So I'm going to try to run quite quickly, leave a little bit of time for questions. But before we begin, why should you listen to me? So I've been involved in Bitcoin for quite a long time. Uh, I became an affiliate in 2013 and ended up being one of the largest affiliates for cryptocurrency in the world. Um, I've since sold, and that wasn't on purpose, uh, since sold that business and uh, work with different RCOs today as well as developing my own technology. You can also follow me on Twitter and speak to me afterwards. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. We can spend a lot of the talk trying to practice this. Great. So, why does blockchain matter at all? So, I think it matters for two different reasons. The one is the technology itself. We're at the cutting edge of a disruptive technology, one that is going to change everything we know. And we have an opportunity to be part of that before it all happens. And more than that, we have a responsibility to, to try and make sure that it does happen. The second reason why blockchain is important is because of Bitcoin. Today, there's a lot of mainstream attention around Bitcoin, around blockchain. And the more attention that blockchain gets, the more attention Bitcoin gets. And the more that it benefits from that. And the stronger the Bitcoin network gets, the more secure it is and the more applications that are possible. When, when people think about Bitcoin, they usually think about payments. There's an argument about scaling, fees, banks are talking about adopting Hyperledger projects. But that's not the only thing that blockchain can be used for. In fact, that is going to be the smallest of all of the use cases once the technology has evolved. So for the purpose of today, let's forget about payments and let's look at technologies that deal with other applications for blockchain. So we're going to go through a few use cases. These are not all of them, but I've picked a few that I think are interesting, and we'll try to run through them as quickly as possible. So the first is GovTech. So when Bitcoin first started, a lot of it was crypto anarchist against the government. Let's you know help tumble nation states. But the reality is that government regulation, government technology is one of the areas that's going to benefit the most from blockchain. If you think about all of the simple applications like voting, all the way through to the waste that's done internally in governments. When governments send documents, when there's processes to be followed, elections, local government, it's an incredible amount of money that's wasted on bureaucracy. And we as the citizens end up paying that money. So if that was reduced and governments were more efficient, then we would be able to achieve more with our tax money. And one of the companies that's doing amazing work with this is a company in, in the Netherlands called Ticken. And they use identity verification and they're working with the Dutch government to put all the birth certificates, death certificates on the blockchain. But they're doing a project at the moment to stop human trafficking. They're cataloging people, and it's quite complicated, but an amazing example. And they're able to prevent human trafficking using the blockchain for, for ID. RegTech, very similar, and for a lot of people, kind of anathema to the point of blockchain. But KYC, AML, compliance with government regulations, these are some of the biggest problems that enterprises have to face, especially now in cryptocurrency with the rise in ICOs. How do we know where the money is coming from? And a company in the space that's doing amazing work is a company called CoinFirm. They do AML analysis, anti-money laundering, by running back on the blockchain. And then they can say that 99% you know, of this money came from known and reputable sources. And they can flag and do a deep analysis on anything that was questionable. 
that gives you compliance with government organizations. That means you can do different types of business activities you weren't able to before. And this is going to be necessary if we're going to go to large-scale enterprise adoption. Trading and finance, not strictly payments or fintech, but the world of trading is one that has been really closed off to the average person. So we saw a lot of OTC developments over the last couple of decades, people able to buy stocks online, but the access to markets and the liquidity to support smaller markets is something that's really, really missing. And as a result, the markets are subject to much larger manipulation by large players, by funds. The idea that anyone could get involved, the idea that liquidity can come from underdeveloped areas, or the creation of new financial assets that serve the market better than what we saw in 2008 are actually something that has already started to happen with blockchain. Um, one of the companies that I'm working with in the space, and I'm an advisor for their ICO, which is ongoing, is a company called CrowdWiz. And they have a few stage plan, but the first is using crowd wisdom. So all the users vote on which trades, and then the, the wisdom of the crowd, in theory, should outperform any individual. Marketplaces. This is an obvious application and one that a lot of ICOs try and claim to be. We're going to create a decentralized marketplace for, for farm equipment, for manufacturing, for pet food, whatever it is, right? Now, marketplaces do not all necessarily need the blockchain, but the blockchain does bring a lot of efficiencies to a market. And one of the biggest advantages is it can bring people who are in areas that don't geographically have access to that market. Marketplaces are traditionally siloed into verticals. They are controlled by the third party entity that's running them. And the ability to have a marketplace that's open to all and that can be freely operated in terms of efficiencies reduces costs and can then also bring liquidity cross vertical. Retail. So, Retail is, oh, and in fairness, Connect Job is also an ICO that I'm an advisor to that went live yesterday, so you should check that out. Re I'm going the wrong way. It's really weird. It's like riding a bike when you have to go the wrong handles, you know? Um, so retail is, is something that we've seen a lot of improvements with, with online. You look at publishers like Amazon, you look at all of these sites able to ship things, you know, we buy from eBay in all the countries in the world, but there's a lot of problems with retail online. And what happened in the old world, where there were monopolies in terms of brick and mortar stores, we started to see the same thing happen online. It's almost impossible to compete against Amazon. It's almost impossible to compete against these large websites. And as a result of them con controlling online presence, they have control over the infrastructure, they can dictate terms and prices to suppliers, all of the logistic costs. So marketplace, so retail is something that can really be improved by giving access to people to a coin that can do frictionless payments, that can be used to build up reputations. There's a lot of possibilities past just having a coin to pay for things. And Commerce Block, for example, by building in smart contracts that control also the bidding and payments between users and merchants directly without the need for a third party, are doing a lot towards this. So, travel and leisure. Another strange example, but if you think today about Booking.com or TripAdvisor or any of these companies, they actually control which hotels you see. They have rating systems, there's user reviews, but at the end of the day, they dictate a lot of terms to the hotels. And as a result, hotels aren't necessarily able to offer the people that they want to come the best deal for them. So, at the end of the day, the hotels are bidding towards these companies instead of bidding towards the users by offering them a better experience. So, Tripkey is a company that is offering a loyalty token, but it's a loyalty token that has a history in it. So you build up a reputation, your preferences are stored, and that information can then be used by hotels to offer you better suited packages at the time when you need, and you get uh, rewards for it. Infrastructure. A lot of the development we've seen in ICOs over the last year has been at the protocol level. Now infrastructure is part of this, and that is the idea of decentralized storage. We've seen things like storage, like Filecoin, like Tech. 
And there's a lot of, a lot of problems today with hosting, with storage of data. We talk about Bitcoin having a problem to scale, but the reality is that enterprise level, the storage costs and the security costs, protecting against failure, they become, they become a lot of the time prohibitive in terms of new technologies. Now, once you decentralize that storage, you reduce the costs, you reduce the overhead and maintenance requirements, you also protect the data in a way that you can't do with a single point of failure. So data can be distributed freely, which also means that all of the unused and inefficient space or network power or electricity that's floating around the world not being used can be put towards a better use and that overall lowers all of the globe's infrastructure costs, allowing us to devote more time to better projects. Artificial intelligence. This, this is something that I'm a little bit obsessed with at the moment and I had an opportunity to, to meet Singularity a few months ago. They have a robot um, called Sophia Hansen, and it's the world's most advanced humanoid robot. And it is, it is unbelievable. But they faced a lot of challenges in developing the technology. Any sort of artificial intelligence application takes a lot of programming work to get it to work. And then you have to run massive amounts of data on it for it to learn. We see all of these companies throwing around these cool terms, machine learning and deep analysis and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is to get them to work takes a lot, a lot of hours in a lab. And the costs are very, very high. So their idea is that they are loading Sophia's consciousness onto <coughs> blockchain, as well as a couple of other labs that also have very advanced humanoid AI. And any time one of them learns something, it automatically teaches the other artificial intelligences. So I mean, if Skynet kind of comes to mind here, but but it's really an amazing project. So that means that you've got this AI robot sitting in Japan that learns something. Someone else in San Francisco built something that learns something else. Now both of them know it. You dramatically reduce your time to learning. The other thing is deployment. To create an AI and deploy it is incredibly, incredibly complicated. And if you have an infrastructure from which AI can be deployed, it's very, very interesting. Something we can speak about at the end, in terms of future, is what about the, the opposite? What about deploying AI on the blockchain? Instead of using the blockchain to deploy AI, we can use the blockchain as a basis for AI. And that's another discussion for another time. Uh, IoT. So we all know that we're moving towards a world of Internet of Things. We have more devices today than they're people, and we're going to connect everything, the world's going to be lovely, we're all going to have flying cars, and not need to work, and whatever, whatever, right? But the reality is that in order to get there, there's a lot of challenges. So we've seen the implementation of smart fridges. You run low on milk, it orders it from Amazon, everything's great, you get your milk. But that is a very, very, very basic application of IoT. And there are a lot of competing people developing IoT frameworks. So unless these frameworks can each speak to each other, unless the protocol is shared, if there's not common language for deployment, we're not going to move ahead. So IOTA is one company that's developed a tangle, the equivalent of a blockchain, and the idea is it's meant to be the basis of all IoT environments. Have to move quickly. Virtual reality, um, similar problems to Internet of Things, no common language, no protocol, no basis for deployment, which means that anyone who wants to create any VR app has to rebuild every VR asset within that app. Imagine if you could share them. Someone already did the Eiffel Tower. Why do I have to build it again? I can just use it and go from that point. Reduces costs, democratizes, means people in their bedroom can create VR, not just porn. Digital signatures. This is one of the most exciting areas of blockchain development. Blockchain has the ability to actually verify whether something is the original or not. So for example, Verisart is doing it by cataloging all art and collectibles around the world. But imagine you have a file on your computer. If you copy it to another folder, there are two identical files sitting on your computer. But one was the original, but they are indistinguishable digitally. They are the same thing. So with blockchain, if you use a digital signature and you copy the file, it tells you this is a copy of the original file, which means that ownership takes on a whole new world. Ever lose a birth certificate? Ever lose it in Africa? So this will solve the problem. And then socioeconomic inequality, poverty, a lot of the things we all got involved in Bitcoin for in the beginning, blockchain actually has the ability to solve them. 
And not only does it have the ability to solve them from a technical perspective, it's bringing together a community that actually cares about solving them. This is one of the most exciting areas by far. But that is not all. If you buy now, um, there are many other, other applications, some of them obvious, some of them very, very far out in science fiction. I chose to list just a few of them, just to give a range of an idea of what's possible. And the other thing to consider is that there'll be many supporting industries. If you look back at the dot-com boom, we would never have realized how many hosting companies there would be, or all of the needs for web design or social media management. So when we shoot ahead a few years, there's going to be all types of companies we don't even realize today just supporting companies that use blockchain technology. And in terms of the future, so over the next few years, expect enterprise adoption to increase. Forget about price for a second. More companies using blockchain. Sidechain developments, interoperability between different blockchains, as well as a whole new generation of blockchain developers and engineers, which is what we're missing at the moment. And the unimaginable. And you can speak to me on Twitter or LinkedIn or find me over here. Thanks very much.